Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Kushbu Farwa and today we are going to discuss upper respiratory tract infections and in this we will discuss all the microorganisms that are involved in causing upper respiratory tract infections. So the learning objectives of today will be anatomy of upper respiratory tract then anatomical division of upper and lower respiratory tract then we will discuss diseases caused by microorganism and then their pathogenicity how they enter the body where they replicate and which signs and symptoms do they cause and we will see their pathophysiology and then their complications then we will see how will we diagnose those particular conditions in the clinic and lastly we will see the treatment options available to us for all those particular microorganisms involving the upper respiratory tract as you can see in this diagram it is representing upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract and in upper you can see nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx and in lower respiratory tract you can see trachea, primary bronchi and lungs. Coming towards the introduction, upper respiratory tract infection represents the most common acute illness evaluated in outpatient setting. Upper respiratory infections range from common cold, typically mild or it could be self-limited or it could be uh, it could lead to nasopharynx syndrome which could be life-threatening uh, viruses account for most upper respiratory tract infection but bacteria primarily also affect or it bacteria may cause super infection in uh, already infected persons so respiratory tract infection refers to any of a number of infectious disease involving the respiratory tract and it is uh, classified into two types upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract so uh, when we say infectious disease infection could be caused by any microorganism that could be virus that could be bacteria that could be fungus so we will see which particular microorganism affects the upper respiratory tract so again in this picture you can see all the organs which are part of upper respiratory tract starting from sinus nasal cavity tonsil hard palate oral cavity tongue epiglottis larynx trachea nasopharynx opening of artery tube pharynx esophagus and in this picture you can well appreciate the uh, organs included in lower respiratory tract and it includes larynx trachea lobe of lungs bronchi about upper respiratory tract infection they are illness caused by acute infection which involves the upper respiratory tract nose sinus pharynx or larynx and commonly included uh, diseases are tonsillitis pharyngitis laryngitis sinusitis otitis media and common cold <coughs> So inflammation of the air passage within the lungs, trachea, that is your windpipe and large and small bronchi, airways from where, from where the air passes to your lungs and they become inflamed because of infection and it could be of two types, bronchitis or pneumonia.
as you can notice in this picture inflammation uh, is shown and it produces a great amount of mucus and it is affecting bronchus and the condition will be called as bronchitis means it is inflammation of bronchi and normally bronchi are not swell and the amount of mucus produced is not as great as shown in this picture so coming towards the dvn of bronchitis it may be acute or chronic acute will be caused by viruses or pollutants or chronic will be due to prolonged smoking or heavy exposure to pollutants in this chest x-ray you can well appreciate bronchitis inflamed bronchi agents of upper respiratory tract infection are streptococcus pneumoniae and it causes pharyngitis or tonsillitis streptococcus pyogenes and it causes pharyngitis and tonsillitis corine bacteria diphtheria it causes diphtheria then is pertussis and it causes whooping cough then is common cold and it is called caused by rhinovirus starting from streptococcus pharyngitis it is also called as strep throat and responsible organism may be pyogenes or pneumonia and they are gram positive bronchi arranged in chains form then is corine bacterium diphtheri and they are gram positive club shaped rods as you can see in this picture then comes the diphtheria and it causes a membrane formation in the throat composed of fibrin tissue and bacterial cells so it is common in developing countries where immunization are given routinely <clears throat> up to 40 to 50% of those who don't get treated can die the exotoxin inhibit protein synthesis and as a result heart kidney or nerve damage may occur it is prevented by dpt vaccine which is for diphtheria tetanus and pertussis pertussis also known as whooping cough it occurs mostly in children and it affects vocal cords and affected persons sound will be very heavy then is mycoplasma and this bacteria has no cell wall and it is gram negative and it is stained with gram sustained and and you can appreciate its structure what are the risk factors for upper respiratory tract infection physical or close contact with someone with a upper respiratory tract infection poor hand washing after contact with an individual with upper respiratory tract infection close contact with children in a group setting like schools or in day care centers and lastly contact with group of individuals in close setting such as during traveling or tours so smoking or second hand smoking healthcare facilities hospital and nursing they are mostly affected and then immunocompromised patients are affected or patients with the organ transplant or, or patients on long term steroid use they get affected very common with this infection now coming towards the pathophysiology of upper respiratory tract infection uh, it could be 
because of virus or bacteria uh, either it could get uh, enter into body either through direct head con hand contact or through droplet then it enters the nose by inhalation then your immune system is activated or it will be filtered or trapped through your air lining some of the pathogens will be trapped others may pass the airway and after that they will be transported to pharynx here inflammatory response will be activated causing swelling erythema and increased mucus secretion resulting in fever so acute respiratory infection symptoms include cough sore throat acute nasal or sinus congestion and illnesses include cough sore throat and acute nasal or sinus congestions so this is again the same diagram we have discussed previously division of upper respiratory tract coming towards its its pathophysiology virus is cause most of the upper respiratory infection with rhinovirus parainfluenza virus corona virus adenovirus uh, respiratory syncytial virus coxsackie virus and influenza virus accounting for most cases causes 5 to 10 percent of the cases to pharyngitis in adults other less common causes of bacterial pharyngitis include uh, group c beta hemolytic streptococci cranibacterium diphtheriae listeria gonorrhoeae uh, these are number of bacteria shown which affect your upper respiratory tract direct invasion of respiratory epithelium and the resulting symptoms respective to area of infection and they are involved and they are transmitted to the human body either through direct contact or through aerosols or droplets or direct hand to hand contact A viral upper respiratory tract infection can be complicated by secondary bacterial infection uh, and the uh, following microorganisms they are secondary bacterial infections which affect upper respiratory tract like group A streptococci group A beta hemolytic streptococci group C and G uh, Neisseria gonorrhoeae cranibacterium so these are the uh, these are some of the bacteria which affect already inflamed upper respiratory uh, infection which was primarily caused by virus and bacteria enters and they cause secondary bacterial infection an already affected upper respiratory tract infection so the causes may be viruses rhinovirus corona virus or adenovirus and bacteria includes are group a streptococcus or influenza these are positive agents for upper respiratory tract bacteria streptococci staphylococci adenovirus and spirochetes and trephonema again the same diagram which we have discussed previously indicating upper division of respiratory tract Coming towards upper respiratory tract infections, uh, starting from nasal cavity, and in nasal cavity uh, rhinitis, it is inflammation of nasal mucosa. Rhinosinusitis, or sinusitis, it is inflammation of uh, nares and paranasal sinuses, including frontal, ethmoidal, maxillary, and sphenoidal. Nasopharyngitis, which is also called as. common cold 
it is inflammation of nares, pharynx, hypopharynx, uvula, and tonsils. Pharyngitis, it is inflammation of pharynx. Then is hypopharynx, uvula, and tonsillitis. These are inflammation of the all respective organs. Laryngitis is inflammation of larynx. Then is laryngotracheotitis. Laryngotracheitis. Sorry. Laryngotracheitis. It is inflammation of larynx, trachea, and subglottic area. And tracheitis. It is inflammation of trachea. These are sinuses, frontal sinus, and maxillary sinus. Then is nasal cavity and in nasal cavity the symptoms appear could be pain and tenderness over sinus or headache uh, mucopleurant nasal discharge for more than 7 to 10 days then stuffy nose then is facial pressure and in this diagram you can see sinus infection shown is shown in sinus so there is a difference between healthy sinus and infectious sinus as you can see in healthy sinus there is no mucus and in infectious sinus there is presence of mucus in the sinus area then coming towards the symptoms of sinusitis and they include tender forehead then symptoms for specifically for maxillary sinus infection include etching in upper jaw uh, teeth tender cheeks then symptoms specific for ethmoidal sinus include swollen eyelids Swelling around, uh, swelling around the eyes, pain between eyes, tenderness of side of nose, loss of smell, and stiff nose. Then symptoms are specific for sphenoidal sinus infection include neck pain, ear aches, and ache on top of head. And in this uh, diagram, you can easily appreciate the sinuses shown like frontal, ethmoidal, sphenoidal and maxillary. Then is complication sinusitis and it includes orbital complications, intracranial complications and bony complications. Orbital complications include areas of orbit like uh, orbital cellulitis, subperiosteal abscess or orbital abscess or cavernous sinus involvement then is intracranial complications and in these in include meningitis, subdural emphysema, epidural abscess and, and abscess may complicate acute or chronic sinusitis then is meningitis and in these conditions fever and chills and spare headache nausea vomiting stiff neck and sensitivity to light will appear and only complications include our osteomyelitis and they are usually related to acute frontal sinusitis Okay, in this diagram you can see some of the organs like sinus, pharynx, trachea, bronchial tubes, lungs, larynx and inflammation of any of these particular portion will lead to uh, upper respiratory tract infection and it will cause inflammation of the organ. organ. 
so starting from as you see in this picture the sinus so starting from sinus uh, it is uh, sinusitis it is simply uh, inflammation of sinus and it appears red and swollen uh, because of an infection or it could be any other problem so its pathophysiology will be viral or bacterial infection it will lead to inflammation and result in edema and then transudation of fluid and as a result it will cause obstruction of sinus activity and it will lead to sinusitis causes may be viral infection bacterial infection fungal infection allergies or any uh, nasal polyp or tumor or deviated nasal septum then maybe because of tooth infection or because of enlarged or infected adenoids in children or maybe because of any medical condition risk factor includes allergic condition nasal passage abnormality or due to some medical conditions like cystic fibrosis uh, gerd gastroesophageal reflux disease or some immune disorder or it may be because of some regular exposure to pollutant signs and symptoms include drainage of thick yellow or greenish discharge from nose or down the back of throat it will cause nasal obstruction or congestion and result in difficulty in breathing through nose and it will cause pain tenderness swelling pressure around your eyes cheeks nose and forehead it will cause pain in upper jaw teeth uh, reduce sense of smell and taste cough and it could worsen at night other signs in, include ear pain headache or sore throat complication if it is persistent it is not treated on time it could lead to asthma or chronic sinusitis or meningitis or vision problem or it could lead to ear infection so these are some of the risk factors and they include nasal passage abnormality or aspirin sensitivity or any medical condition as we have discussed earlier these all we have or discussed all these earlier uh, this is rep repetition of the slide now coming toward the nitus and it is reaction that occurs in eyes nose and throat and it is because of some allergen that triggers the release of histamine and histamine causes inflammation and fluid production in the lining of nasal passage sinus and eyelids it has few types like allergic where that could be seasonal or perennial or non allergic may be because of vasomotor rhinitis that could be irritant causes may be allergic or seasonal allergies so its pathophysiology is allergens or because of certain medications it will lead to immediate and delay release of number of mediators example histamine and it will increase mucus secretion production and it will result in nasal congestion and pressure now coming towards the signs and symptoms which will appear after nose congestion and it will be itchy nose mouth eyes throat skin and problem with smell runny nose sneezing and 
tearing eyes later it would lead to stuffy nose and also known as nasal congestion then coughing clogged ears decreased sense of smell uh, sore throat dark circles under the eye puffiness under the eyes and fatigue and irritability then is epiglottitis and it is inflammation of the tissue that covers the trachea that is your windpipe and it could be like threatening disease causes include streptococcus pneumoniae hemophilus influenza varicella zoster herpes simplex virus type 1 and staphylococcus aureus uh, other may include heat and it could damage your windpipe signs and symptoms includes swear sore throat difficult and painful swallowing uh, drooling due to swear pain when swallowing uh, uh, heavy voice hoarse voice harsh uh, breathing difficult breathing and skin and lips will appear blue, blue. complications include meningitis abscess adenitis focal granuloma and subsequent necrotizing fasciitis of the head and neck and this is very rarely seen these are some of the complications if the condition persists then it could lead to these conditions coming towards the next disease which is laryngitis and it is swelling and irritation of voice box that is usually associated with hoarseness and or loss of voice the risk factor for this include smoking overusing of voice and having upper respiratory infection like cold flu or bronchitis others may include uh, its causes include uh, use of overuse of voice allergies it could be due to bacterial infection it could be due to bronchitis or it could be due to GERD or injury or some chemical or as a result of pneumonia signs and symptoms include hoarseness loss of voice tickling in the throat and dry or uh, uh, dry throat or cough fever general feeling of lethargy tiredness and difficulty breathing these are some of the signs and symptoms that will appear then is pharyngitis and it is inflammation of pharynx and it has two types acute pharyngitis and chronic causes include virus or bacteria or it could be due to common cold flu and its pathophysiology is group um, K beta hemolytic streptococci it will attack and then it will lead to antigen and antibody reaction and it will result in inflammation and as a result pharyngeal swelling fever and enlarged lymph nodes will appear these factors include cold and flu season this happens in mostly in uh, after cold or flu or having close contact with someone who have sore throat or cold smoking exposure to second hand smoke frequent sinus infection or allergies Signs and symptoms include sore throat with cold, sneeze, cough, high fe uh, low fever, sorry, less than 102, mild headache, fatigue, and it will lead to enlarged lymph node in neck and armpits, swollen tonsils, headache, loss of appetite, 
swollen spleen uh, and inflamed liver coming towards the next uh, it is tonsillitis it is inflammation of tonsils and it may be due to virus or bacteria causes include virus or bacteria uh, bacteria include in streptococcal bacteria or it could be due to virus and virus include epstein bar or kawasaki starting from types of tonsillitis uh, cataral uh, tonsillitis when tonsils are inflamed as part of generalized infection of oropharyngeal mucosa it is termed as cataral ton uh, tonsillitis then is chronic tonsillitis and other type is membranous tonsillitis sometimes exudate from the crypts from colles uh, uh, or uh, to form a membrane over the surface of tonsil gave rise to clinical picture of membranous tonsillitis as you can see in the picture uh, membrane is formed over tonsils signs symptoms include difficulty in swallowing change in voice hoarseness bad breath cough and nasal congestion others include headaches or sore glands in throat pain in throat Uh, tonsils coated with yellow or white patches difficulty breathing while because of uh, swollen tonsils red and sore tonsils or eyes body aches and chills coming towards the treatment of tonsillitis it includes a uh, number of drugs like paracetamol calpol panadol and to bring temperature down aspirin or dispirin can be used and for bacterial tonsillitis penicillin or erythromycin can be used uh, surgical we remove the tonsils if necessary and how to prevent it uh frequent hand washing is the best way to prevent all kinds of infection including tonsillitis next is peritonsillar abscess or pense it is a collection of pus between fibrous capsule of the tonsil usually at its upper pole and the superior constrictor muscle of pharynx as you can see in the picture so signs include pyrexia swear tristness edema of the soft palate enlarged hyper hyperemic and displaced tonsils tristness halitosis halitosis is bad breath rupture of the abscess and it has four types depending on its position and they are anterior posterior lingual and tonsillar and etiology includes it is more common in males and recurrent tonsillitis current body embedded in tonsils and tonsillar tag left behind after tonsillectomy its pathophysiology includes recurrent tonsillitis fibrosis of tonsillar crypt closure of tonsillar crypt due to new infection leading to pus break through the capsule of tonsil leading to peritonsillar cellulitis and finally resulting in peritonsillar abscess This is repetition of slide. Symptoms include throat pain, tremors, increased salivation, 
and thick speech complications if it is not treated on time it will lead to some complications including parapharyngeal abscess next is adenoids when hypertrophied nasopharyngeal tonsil starts producing symptoms of condition is referred to as adenoids the normal in involution of nasopharyngeal tonsil starts from the onset of puberty but sometimes it can persist for a longer period and in this picture you can well appreciate adenoids it is between 3 to 10 years of age it could be due to tb or some other infection and it is similar to tonsillitis clinical picture includes nasal obstruction uh, and it will result in mouth breathing these are number of clinical manifestations given now coming towards the physical examination of these infections so we will look for swollen and redness inside wall of nasal cavity signs of inflammation redness of the throat enlargement of tonsils white secretion on tonsils and large lymph nodes around the head and neck redness of eye facial tenderness that could be due to sinusitis and other may include bad breath which is halitosis cough voice hoarseness and fever coming towards the diagnosis how will we diagnose these uh, we will diagnose this on the basis of symptoms physical examination and lab test or by bacterial culture from nasal swab or throat uh, throat swab and after that evaluation of allergy or asthma and detection of enlarged lymph node and sore throat diagnosis will be be uh, based on the following reading from blood culture or cbc or neck x-ray nasal endoscopy could be done imaging studies uh, nasal and sinus culture studies and these are all the investigations that will be performed to diagnose the condition and it include physical examination x-ray of sinus scan of sinus nasal swab test and its growth on culture media physical examination mri or ct scan and investigation will be based on the results gained from cbc or from chest x ray blood culture these are all repetition of same diagnostic tools coming towards the treatment there will be two types of treatment one is pharmacological and other is non pharmacological treatment non pharmacological treatment includes patient should be encouraged to drink fluids prevent dehydration and possible uh, decrease the viscosity of respiratory secretion use of vaporization may further promote the thinning and loosening of respiration respiratory secretions and pharmacological treatment includes use of ansets that are ibuprofen or paracetamol and antihistamines and that includes dafen join antibiotics ciprofloxacin amoxicillin or tetracycline these are all the drugs which could be used antitussive steroids or decongestants 
Rarely surgical procedure may be necessary in some of the complication uh, like sinus infection or um, obstruction of airway in which the patient is uh, feeling difficulty while breathing. These are some of the remedies, home remedies for respiratory infection. Making stream in shower by turning on the hot water without going under it and breathing the stream air. Uh, other is drinking warm beverage like hot water, hot chocolate, warm milk, using vaporizer and by avoiding cold and dry air if possible and lastly honey can be used. So if the infection is viral then obviously antibiotics will not be used then antiviral drugs will be used. Thank you so much for your time.